again. The rig on that is awesome. It looks awesome. I should, here, hold on. Uh, this is what we're working on. Oh, I don't have my phone. I, camera? Here, I can take a picture with the Varus. I always forget that I have this ability. Where's your camera that we just bought you? In my bag. <laughs> This is with the Varus. <laughs> yeah, here, switch me. Uh, that's here, yeah. That sun was bad. Your two megapixel picture. <laughs> nice. Here. That looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it does look horrible. I just, you just film with the Varus. I just wanted, yeah. I just wanted to show the rig. It looks awesome. All right, so we're working on this cobalt, some kind of transmission shift solenoid circuit fault. And it's been to a few different garages from what I was told. This is someone actually, Caleb, that goes to our church and was referred to us first. And he texted me and I messaged him back and sent him to uh, Danner. And so he's, you know, driving around without stickers because he's got a check engine light on he can't get rid of. And uh, it's been to a few different shops and apparently my brother scanned it. It's some kind of transmission solenoid fault. So. Let's get to it. No. It is. Well, at least we know what we're working on now. It's a 2010 Chevy Cobalt. Check engine light is on, and on the cluster, it's speaking to me in a different language. Porte non firm, the danger, oh, hello. hello. <laughs> That's a new one for me, that being in a different language. Well, it looks like it's got a Porte del Taco. Code. That something's danger. Okay, so on this one, I'm gonna do a full code scan. The last couple I did not because they were just engine faults, but this one has transmission codes too. So, so we have a 700 code in the engine. That's a generic code saying, hey, go look at the transmission module. There's codes in there. The transmission one's the one we want. The check engine light is on because of the 700 code. 700 code takes you to the transmission and the transmission, we have a one, two shift solenoid control circuit high code. Typically when you see control circuit high, I'm talking about an open circuit. I got to look at their diagram to see how the shift solenoids controlled. P0974 airbag. I'm not worried about Yeah, lost communication stuff. That's going to be related to low battery voltage, low voltage, tire pressure sensor stuff. I don't care about that. Our, our shift solenoid A control circuit high codes, the one we are concerned about for this case study. So we'll tag it with that P0974 2010 Chevy Cobalt. I don't know why this is non, was non-fixable. From what I was told, this went to a few different garages. Let's go drive it, see what it does. It already says the one, two solenoid is supposed to be on already. feels like I didn't have a one, two shift. Let's see if when it shifts, when it says it's commanded to shift a second. Yeah, it didn't, there was no shift there from, from the commanded gear went from one to two, it was missing. It's like I'm missing first gear. So commanded gear is one. Now it's two, but there was no shift. Yeah, we're missing first gear. Basically just pulling out in second. I don't know why no one could fix this. It seems pretty straightforward. So far. This might be one because this, this guy apparently is a little mechanically inclined that uh, we may not be going, if this ends up being inside the transmission, we're probably not gonna have a follow-up for you guys. Our job today is gonna be to say 
that are wiring integrity down to the transmission control solenoid on the outside of the transmission is good. We'll use a test light for that test and some control circuit integrity testing using a voltmeter too. And uh, then we'll be able to tell them, hey, it's internal. I wanna leave the battery charge up for a bit, uh, but I wanna look at a diagram and see how this is laid out. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at my one, two shift solenoid. It shares uh, what looks like a power feed between the two, three and the torque converter clutch. So this red wire, let's look at this red wire, see where it goes. Uh, let's go here first. Yep, ECM transfuse. Um, and we don't have codes for the two, three or TCC. So at least initially we can assume that that feed is good going into at least pin E on that connector. And that means this is a ground side switch circuit uh, and the computer is setting a circuit high fault code, uh, there very well could be an open because they can run bias voltage signals on ground side switch circuits. And uh, that can give us circuit high codes whenever it's being commanded on and off, the voltage levels aren't correct. But circuit high typically uh, leads us to that and open. Uh, we could have a driver that's faulty in the ECM and it's never controlling it. So we could do a measurement right at the ECM on pin two on that light green wire. That would be very beneficial as well as pin A, this light green wire on the TCM connector. That's where we need to start for this diagnosis. I, I think given the situation, I, I think I wanna start at pin A on the connector underneath it's a light green wire should be pretty straightforward so let's go under and do that i'm gonna leave it run man it don't get any easier than that light green wire that guy right there let me make sure some dirty wires there it looks kind of yellowish sorry my arm's in your way that's my guy using phil's Electrical probe, best freaking probe in the market. I read a post by Phil who made the probe. He's like, yeah, I used to just make them like part-time till this guy named Scanner Danner plugged my, my tool on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool. He mentioned me. So he's getting some business via the videos and I, I'm glad for him. Phil is a technician at, at heart and he made this tool and he should get he should get uh, revenue from it. Just I love supporting other techs. But to have that tool where I can, I can plug in my probe right to the back of that, uh, it's just a, such a nice tool, man. Love it. Some people are like, you should poke holes in wires. Yeah? Watch me. Okay, going to our scope multimeter. We have voltage on that wire right now. So that battery voltage on that wire tells us Number one, that this pink wire that comes in is good. Our battery voltage feed is good. That's voltage coming into the circuit and then it's wrapping through the solenoid winding and it's coming out on the light green wire right there. And honestly, that's great for us at this point because so far initially, we're not going inside. We're not going inside the transmission. All right, so I wanna see if I can bi-directionally control this and we'll switch this up. I'm gonna go to a graphing meter or the lab scope. Graphing meter works for what we're doing. We have some other activity in here. My guess is there's another solenoid that's being turned on and off. We're getting some feedback from that. Uh, torque converter, the two, three are on here. The torque converter one's pulse width modulated. It is possible that that is pulsing right now possible and that's given us that little bit of oscillation I'm not concerned about that at the moment but I am interested in a bi-directional test one two shift solenoid on off test all right let's see it already says that it's on so let's turn it off yeah that's the command changed home meter 
interesting. So with it off, I don't have those spikes. And when I turn it back on, I do. It's like the computer's trying to turn it on, but not able to fully turn it on. Is that a driver issue? I want to get a current measurement. That'll answer some questions I have. We can substitute a test light in here too. In fact, that'd be easier. Let's do that first. Scanner Danner prototype test light coming soon. Um, this will not be a sticker. That'll be engraved. It's a sticker right now, uh, but it comes with a uh, banana jack end so I can change my leads if I wanted to do it that way or if I wanted to maybe back probe a connector. I love that. I love that feature. Um, the other thing is it comes with, this is an incandescent bulb. It comes with an LED bulb too. More info to come on this. This is just a prototype right now. But what I'm going to do is go to ground with my test light. Touch battery positive and make sure it lights. Okay. And then just going to go to my, my fills probe. So that's wrapping through right now. That's test light going to ground. That's on the control wire. And that shouldn't be lit. I mean, the circuit's on right now. Scanner, you can see that it's on. If I turn it off, you see no change with the light. Turn it on. On is ground side switch. That light should go out. Off, on, off. So no change there. That means I, I, I don't want to do a current flow measurement anymore. Um, I'm concerned about an open in the wire between there and the computer or a driver issue. Sorry, I'm, I'm wavering here on the test I want to do. I, I just think the amperage measurement is not going to help us. I would prefer to continue doing what we're doing, unplug the TCM connector and redo this test, which is what I'm going to do. Very easily done. Connectors unplugged. That light is no longer lit. So now what I want to do is switch this to battery positive. That light is lit. That means it's grounded. Circuit's on. Circuit off. Circuit on. Circuit off. So it's working like it should be with my test light. All right, there's a ground on that circuit. Hmm. Okay, now I'm now interested in what kind of voltage signal we have unplugged. Test lights out of the picture. Circuit off. Let's see what voltage we have. Yeah, there's like a pulsed bias voltage going on there. That's with the circuit off. It's unplugged. Just a just a. Uh, control wire that's open on the transmission side. Get a shot of that, right? So we're clear, unplugged, transmission side, ground side switch circuit with the driver off. We are looking at a, I don't know, roughly two and a half volt bias, a pulsed bias signal. And then if I go to the scan tool and turn it on, which grounds it, yep, pulls it down, okay. So that's, that's saying driver and wiring are good. In particular, because of my test light, being the load acts as a solenoid. We are gonna do an amperage measurement. But one more time, this is with the test light in there. Turn the circuit on, test light lights, turn it off, All right? And, uh, I'm not sure the current flow of that. I've never measured it yet. We're about to find out. Current flow of my new test light. 200 milliamps. Nice. Here, let's invert it. Two hundred. Close to that anyway. Let's re-zero.
150 milliamps. All right. I know that that solenoid is going to carry a little bit more, so I'm going to increase increase our current flow a little bit here. And uh, we're going to put two test lights on this circuit. These are both around 200 milliamps each. Show you guys that amperage. We're just kind of loading that driver just a bit more than what a single one is because I know the trans solenoids draw more. Yeah, it's 300, 310 milliamps with both of those lights in there. I'm fine with that driver. Watch both lights. I'll turn the driver off. Turn the driver on. I'm fine with the computer. I'm fine with the control wire. Okay. So then why, with it plugged in, is the computer not grounding the solenoid? That voltage is basically zero with a bias unplugged. Let's turn the amp ammeter off for a minute. Plug this connector back in. We have some oil in the connector. See if you can get a shot of that. Uh, all up in here. There's oil in that connector. So that's not good. The fact that we have oil there could be a factor. Have you got an inspection mirror? It's very good. My man. It's a little bit discolored on those two pins too. You see that? So I'm curious now to see what pin that is. So this kind of orange one right here where my thumb is and the yellow black that's next to it. And then the green one is my solenoid. That's on the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over, you ready? That's where most of that oil was. There's the green, that'd be my, my shift solenoid and those other two let me get that mirror back in there. Yep, that's where the oil is. I'm gonna spray that out real quick. You got some brake cleaner over here, Bill. And a blowgun. Nice, my man, you already got the blowgun out. Can I steal it real quick? Yeah, take it away. <laughs> yeah. Taking all of this stuff. Well, Bill's organized, Danner's not. Working with his stuff is awful. All right, I'm gonna shut this off for a minute. Some of it. it smells like cancer to me. Watch your eyes. I have safety glasses on. Oh, yeah. The bottom two in that had all the brown around it that was discolored, but it looks good. It's not burnt. I thought it was burnt. It was just the fluid. Let's see the result of this now. Let me turn the key on or I'll start it back up. Nope, sorry. I can't start. With that unplugged, I probably can't start it because of the, the park neutral switch. Uh, well, I'll try it with it unplugged because I wanted to do some unplugged tests. That battery's freaking dead. Yeah. Dead, dead. That's not helping us. Just that same light green wire. That's that same roughly two and a half volt bias. And then Plug this in. This is gonna jump to battery voltage. Yeah, it's like, it's not grounding it. Let me turn the headlights off. So the one, two solenoid is off right now. I don't have, let's see, circuit off. 
I don't remember if it was off that I had the spikes or on I had the spikes. I think on is when I had them. So that's circuit off. That's normal circuit off voltage. Turn it on. Yeah, it's not. I need to see that first moment where it turned it on. It's right there, but it's not. How's it not pulling it to ground? Like one of the things that you would see is too much amperage where initially it will ground it fully and then the computer's like, whoa, that's too much. And then it doesn't fully ground it after that. I'm not seeing that because we would have a very low signal right here in that area. It could be looking at amperage and not liking it still. So let's do an amperage measurement. I said I was gonna do that before. Change paths. I'm definitely gonna do it now. We'll compare like the two, three as well. Wow, that's a huge amount of current flow. That's why. For it to not be, that's, that's, that's an insane amount of current. This, this, is a, this is a faulty solenoid in the transmission. See if I can, let me go to the lab scope to get a better time base set up here. Wow, that's awesome. So I wasn't seeing this before, I'm seeing it now. It's a massive amount of current flow on this circuit. So on the, on the graphing meter, I was missing these lower spikes. Uh, the yellow trace here, uh, let's jack this up to 50 maybe so we can see this better. Yeah, and there's a huge voltage spike after it lets it go. Uh, this is a really, really cool capture, Caleb. All right, so to explain to you guys what's going on here, if we look at this yellow line, this is, this is our circuit where it's off, and this is where the computer turns it on. And we're talking about a really, really small time frame here too. Let's put our cursors in to give you a perspective of how short this entire event is, the on and off period which is roughly right there. We're talking delta time to 29.41 microseconds. Really fast signal. In 29 microseconds, we're going from zero to, let's just look at cursor one. Cursor one on the green trace. This is zero amps here all the way up to a height of the max here, 4.4, sorry. Down, I'm down in the lower area, 4.4, or you can look at my cursor and you can read that too. So this is be kind of hard to get on it. That's 3.8, it's 4.4 at the peak. 4.4 amps of current in 29 microseconds. And for it to make that kind of amperage without pulling all the way to ground. Like to give you an idea what I'm talking about, that yellow trace down here in the valley is four point, so cursor one is 4.6 volts. So we're not pulling all the way to ground. The one, two shift solenoid shorted. This is a shorted one, two shift solenoid. And the reason why it looked like we weren't grounding the circuit on that one, scale is I didn't have enough detail. I had a filter set and I missed it. Let's go back to it, I'll show it to you. This is a really, really great capture. I'm gonna go in just a little bit more. Nice. Huge amount of current flow here too. That's that voltage spike at the end, over 50 volts. go 20 amps and go 100 so we can see it show our cursors again hands down right now you sell the job it needs a one two shift solenoid i'm just trying to gather some good data for you guys yeah roughly 28 milliseconds long is that on time event we're hitting 4.7 amps 
in that amount of time. And I know typically a shorted solenoid, we'd see a straight up line. Um, I was just thinking, could that still be like oil and, and the circuit bleeding to the other one? Because normally with a shorted solenoid, we'd see a straight up line and this one's kind of curved, but I'm on such a zoomed in time, time frame. I think that is the answer to that. Let's peak detect that. I mean, you know, you could call that a straight up line. I think it's just, it's, it's in a current limit mode, guys, is why it's not pulling all the way, all the way to ground. That's what that is to me. That's, that's a shorted, shorted solenoid. Why is the test light staying lit when that circuit's being turned on and off? Remember, off is high voltage, on is low voltage. And so that's the answer to that earlier. If I go back to this, so test light connected to ground, this answers this test from earlier. Why is the test light staying lit when the computer is clearly turning on the solenoid on ground side switch low voltage right well it's being pulsed on and off number one number two is it's being pulsed on and off so fast that it essentially looks like it's on let me go to a higher time base to illustrate that to you and we got some scope aliasing going on here uh, which is the high low spikes so ignore that but what i want you to focus on uh well let me drop it down so that's not misleading to you We'll go 100 milliseconds. We'll pull this trigger over. So if you look at the yellow trace, you'll notice that this line up here is battery voltage. Remember, I'm connected to ground, so my light's lit. This is battery voltage on the light. And then just a real brief moment, 29 microseconds, it, it grounds the circuit not fully, then lets it go again. That's why we're showing battery voltage here all the time. You got power coming in, wrapping through a solenoid that's shorted, the windings are shorted, and then test lights connected to ground, so it's essentially connected to battery positive through the solenoid winding, and we're just momentarily turning it on and off, You're never seeing a difference on the light. That's why it looks like the driver's not functioning using the test light with the solenoid in place. Watch it again as I turn it on and off. This is off, this is on. No change whatsoever in that light. Nothing you can see with your naked eye. It's a good lesson on testing drivers and why we need to understand the circuit design and how it operates. Because when I test that driver with just my test light, with the solenoid still plugged in, it's failing the test. This is saying we have a driver problem. We don't have a driver problem. We have a shorted solenoid and a driver that's limiting current flow. That's why that test light's not turning on and off. But do the same check, unplug the connector, turn it on and off. What's the difference? Watch it again. What's the difference? Connector's up, now unplugged. Test light is off because the circuit is on. It's ground side switch. Now when I switch it off, now we don't see it because I'm connected to ground. I'm gonna switch my test light to battery positive. Circuit on, circuit off. Circuit on, circuit off. Good driver, good control, shorted solenoid. It's internal to the transmission. What else can I do? One more test I can show you is a resistance measurement. Uh, we could also, while we're here, compare the ones, uh, the two, three. Let's do that. The two, three. So we'll go for a resistance measurement. It'll be a little bit difficult, potentially. Uh, I might scratch the resistance measurement test. I don't need to do it. Um, it would just answer any other questions you guys might have of internal circuitry shorted. I can't answer that without going in the transmission now at this point, I can't answer that. But a resistance measurement would help in that on that front. So yellow black's what I want. This one should be next to my light green. Okay. That's unplugged. I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm on the yellow black. It was right next to the green. Should be my two, three. Okay. We're gonna do the two, three now. Right now the two, three is off. 
And we're reading battery voltage as we should be. Ground side switch circuit. Let's turn this one on, see what it looks like. Test light lit. And we are pulling down to zero volts. It's a constant ground. I can freeze that, show you this zoomed in. It's a constant ground and it's only 700 milliamps. 700 milliamps of current, 0.7. Look at that green line. Let's uh, change our scales here. Because I was on some massive scale so we could see what we were looking at. Let's go 20. And then 20 amps, don't need that. We'll, we'll drop this down to five amps. So we see this a little bit better. And then a longer time base for sure, because this is just constantly turned on. Maybe two seconds, probably too much. Let's go 500. Home tab scanner, turn this thing off. That's circuit off. We could probably turn peak detect off for this. The test light's not important here. In fact, for this test, I want the test light out of there. We'll get rid of the test light. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is test light removed. I just want to measure current flow of the solenoid and uh, see the voltage drop. So we'll turn that guy on and we'll bounce right back and take a look at it. You see that that dropped down, pause that picture, zoom out, and you see exactly what we'd want to see with a ground side switch circuit, which is Battery voltage on the yellow trace up there, and when it turns on, it grounds down to around 0.14 of a volt, and then our amperage is uh, 0.53. And that's with the test light removed, that's why it's a little bit less for this one. 0 0.53, 0 0.62 at the peak. So we have, a, we have a shorted condition, for sure. It's not a driver problem. Inside the transmission, it could be something external to the solenoid wiring touching inside to direct to battery positive is possible but i can't answer that can't answer that here got to go inside let me take one more capture of this for a good picture go off on off now we got some numbers in there cursor one is showing us in this area, we're at 14.68 volts and uh, zero amps, point, minus 0 0.01. And then cursor two is with the circuit on. You see I'm reading 0.17 of a volt on the yellow trace and a half an amp on the green trace. That's a great capture of the one, two shift solenoid and the way the one, sorry, that's a good capture of the two, three. That's the way the one, two should be working. The final resistance check, which I'm gonna to try to do, can answer solenoid condition, can. But if it's touching inside, it's still gonna be misleading. Yeah, the resistance check isn't gonna help me. So what I'm picturing is what if inside of the transmission, this pink wire, which is the feed, is touching the light green wire inside. What I'm illustrating then is inside, if the red and light green wire are touching each other inside, I can measure between A and E all I want, and I'm still gonna read zero ohms, whether it's the wiring that's touching or the solenoid that's shorted. So we're done. The resistance measurement does not help me. I'm not doing it. It's a waste of time. Did you wanna show, uh, we missed that, the test light in here on the two, three. Well, this is the test light on the 2.3 with the solenoid plugged in. So this is, this is one where a solenoid's plugged in and you can still do the test light test because the solenoid's not shorted. Yeah. And we're only slightly adding to the amperage of the circuit. That's the 2.3. Uh, I'll show you, Danner, the, um, the pictures for the 1.1. One, one. The, inside the solenoid shorted. So either the harness inside the case or the solenoid itself. Correct, it's exactly right. And we were just talking about that. It's They're shorted, like a direct it's short? Direct short. Um, what I can't tell you for sure is like you just said, I don't know if that red feed wire right there is possibly touching the light green wire right there inside. There's no test I can do to verify that. No, you gotta pull the side cover off. Yeah, so I'm drawing on the two, three, on the yellow black wire, I'm drawing about a half an amp of current when I turn it on and I'm dropping voltage all the way to ground. On this one, 
it, I'm, I'm reaching 4.4 amps and it's only pulling down to four volts from 14 to four, but only momentary because it's shorted. It yeah, so I'm yeah. going from 14 to four, 14 to four, and it's pulse width modulated because okay. it's, it's freaking yeah. shorted. And I'm hitting four amps in that amount of time frame. Is that Driver is good. I don't know. Driver's good, wiring's good. I, I, I unplugged and verified circuit integrity. Yeah, okay. Driver's fine. It's carrying four amps. This is gonna cook the driver if this stays this way. Yeah, one. for sure. If you wanted to, and you just wanted to get rid of the check engine lights, you pass inspection, you could take the yellow uh, wire or the green wire for the one two shift solenoid and run it to the control side of a relay and then run the other side of the control side of the relay to battery positive. Right? Remember, it's a ground side switch circuit and the computer would be turning that relay on and thinking, hey, the circuit's good and uh, <laughs> the check engine light would go off. You still wouldn't have first gear, but that'd make the check engine light go off. Science. <laughs> right, Caleb? This is a really good one. I, I hope that I get a chance to show you guys inside I don't see that happening here. I think this is gonna go back to the owner and we're gonna tell them. Um, but great case study, man. This is standard practice. I don't work on transmissions ever, yet I can fully troubleshoot an unknown transmission control system. Why? Because I know my fundamentals. Guys, if you wanna learn your fundamentals, power and ground side switching, bias voltage, um, control circuit integrity, using a test light, when to use it, when not to use it, when you have a shorted solenoid, how it can be misleading that you have no control, which is exactly what we have. Guys, sign up for my classes on my website, scannerdanner.com. I teach at a technical college. I've been doing this for 20 years and I can pour that foundation into you that will allow you to work on any system. It doesn't matter the year maker model of the car. Sure, some of my case studies when I did my classes are a little bit older, it doesn't matter, it's the same stuff. Yeah, this is an older car, 2010, doesn't matter. I can do the same exact test on a 2021 model year car. Guys, thank you for joining us. Maybe we'll have a little more with this. If we get the repair, we will. If we don't, this is going back to the customer and there was enough info here to learn from. Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Uh, one, one more thing here, Caleb. Well, it could be worded funny. It could be, but I want Caleb to see this. 6.4 hours, Caleb, but that's pressure control solenoid valve R&R. &R. What's that say? It includes R&R &R valve body cover and replace solenoid and or connector. Uh, include, include, does not include wheel alignment because subframe's got to come down. <laughs> 6.4 hours. <laughs> hours, guess what? We're not going to have a follow-up on this one. This one's going back. I was telling Caleb and, and the viewers that if he wants to, you can drive it without first gear. Is it not? Did you drive There's it? There's just no first gear. It just so it goes second. second. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is no one, two upshift. Yeah. But I mean, is there like something mechanically, like hydraulically, where it kind of does go in first nah, gear? Or? Just, it just, it runs I okay. If you hold it in manual well, though, if it would take here's the thing. Below, or can you? I don't know, but here's the thing. You could wire that control saw that wire through, through a test through light, a relay through a scanner dinner no, test light yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? you can do that and just let it glow but, every time it's yeah. trying to shift but you could you could wire a relay onto that circuit clear the codes and it would it would be happy it probably would set gear position error codes after that yeah. the only reason it's not setting gear position Cause codes because yeah. it knows there's a solenoid that's messed up okay scratch that that would only that would only get rid of one code. It would set a different code. It would repair <laughs> instructions. Let's see shift. What are we looking for? The shift solenoid. One two shift solenoid replacement that's right the there. Control that one. one. So that's so that's in okay, the valve. The solenoid valve is probably this part. That's probably just the solenoid. The solenoid is the part we need. Remove the transmission side cover. Okay. Remove the okay control body replacement. Air cleaner. Underhood electrical center bracket, battery, shift cable, shift cable bracket, why the range switch, I don't know, side cover bolt, engine support fixture, lifting it, remove the left front tire and wheel, inner fender, drive, drive shaft, shaft, power steering gear, mounting bolt, uh, remove the frame. Remove the frame. <laughs>
refer to frame replacement. So, you, so that's a subframe. It's there's a, a six, chance that guys that do this professionally, like yeah. as their you know tranny stuff, probably no way to drop it enough to sneak that thing out. But I mean, you're talking. You're talking six, seven hundred dollars in labor plus a solenoid. I think maybe that's what he was quoted. That somebody quoted him internal transmission. He maybe he wanted a second opinion. I don't. He started talking. Guess about what? PCMs. Here's his second. No, no, all that's good. I know. You here's his. It. Here's his second opinion. Yeah. It's broke. Yeah. Inside, <laughs> it needs that. It needs to come apart. That's so a you huge job. can see if job. it's the harness itself, or you know, I mean, it's not going to be the harness inside. I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, but. There was some fluid on that connector too, so that doesn't help. That in between the TCM connector and that that plug, you mean, there the, was the where oil. Where goes into yeah. the actual? Yeah, and I brake cleaned it and sprayed it out and plugged it back in. Um, so I mean, it's possible inside there's a wiring problem, but you, to get there, you you can't take the side cover off till you drop the frame. Yeah, and then you're not going to know what you're you, six hours in. Yeah, well, you're three and a half hours in before you know what you need to get. Right. There will not be a follow-up <laughs> on this one, guys. Sorry. There could be. You never know. All right. Maybe. Danner might take the I job. I mean, with the seriously, with the price of used cars right now, yeah. if you've got a car that I'll look it over and see if it's worth any, you know, if it's worth fixing. He needs people, a battery, too. I know. And Could his be. dash is in Spanish. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we're still back to maybe there's an update, maybe there's not. Either way, we had fun. Hope you guys did, too.